there's been confusion regarding private and public because within the name that we use within a social aggregate, we've joined the two. We've made a merger of them. But what's happened is you've, extingu you've extinguished your individual private side when you join the public. Because what you've actually done is you've gone in surety through insurance for your use of what is public. The public side being the surname, the Christian side or the given name is the private side. When you take your private individual Christian side, which is inalienable, and attach it to the public side, which is the tax, or the common side, or the common share of everybody's participation together as a whole, of which you were never to be part of, according to scripture, because it said be separate. The problem that's happened at that moment is now you have now placed yourself in a guarantor position for what is your common usage of taxable public property. So your given name is now being held as collateral for your use of what is common. You've now disposed of your individuality to be part of an aggregate. So you're no longer at one. You're now being surety for something of someone else's. And because the aggregate of society is something that's separate from your individuality, you've now lost your individuality to touch what is common. Now your individuality side was graced by Christ, paid for it. What is in common with society is a belief that Christ does not place himself as the surety for us. So it gives you the ability to think you could be surety for another. And there is no way sinful man could be surety for another sinful man, whether in an individual position or in aggregate. It's a misconception. It's a misbelief. And therefore, it becomes a defect. And therefore, by doing that, by joining in with the aggregate, which generally would mean you being part of the Gentile 20 nations, and Gentiles were unclean unbelievers, by you touching that, you have now basically remove the grace that was given you. And therefore now you will now be surety and guarantor any duty, debt, and liability in the share aggregate that you have now consented to be involved in. Unfortunately, people do not see this and they think that they can actually use something that belongs to another without paying for it by license. License being permission to use property belonging to another for a fee. You do not use a license for your individuality. You're using a license to use property of another. And because that property doesn't belong to you, you've now mixed the church with the state. When you mix in church with state, the state is superior. The state overrides your individuality at that point. Because you've given up your God-given inalienable position of grace for the idea of legal. The legal side being the surname. And because the law under man's world, because not everybody's going to accept the grace position of Christ, it allows that other position to be there because there is no other way to operate society. Not everybody is going to be a believer. And therefore, whether or not your parents knew or didn't know, you following the same pattern of ignorance will lead you astray into the liability. Because you have to 
lie in order to say that your surname is your name. It is a legal fiction. A fiction is a lie. It's a, just a belief in something that has no founding. You can't prove it, but in fiction we say that a legal fiction can't be disproved. X is Y and can't be disproved. Your given name is your surname and can't be disproved. Because it can't be disproved when you're saying it. So when you say John Smith, you're saying you're John of Smith. But there's no proof of that. No one could prove their origin on those names. And because it's made up, it's used in positive law, and positive law is not natural law. Natural law is based on reality. Positive law is based on legislation. For the idea of enforcing something. Man wants to rule over himself, we start to run into positive law. When he had God, it was natural. Man naturally knew God was his creator and his ruler. So when man basically starts to defect from God, he carries a defect in his name. And therefore the Gentiles, having no covenant with the true God, based on, you can go into definition, Samuel Johnson's Dictionary, 1755, actually even defines the term gentilidious, which means Gentile, we've turned it in even to the word gentleman, which is really just a domesticated heathen. We've kind of tamed him down. He's not as animalistic as he was before. He's a, like a tamed wild animal. So under Gentilidious, which would be the same as your surname, because the surname is a Gentile name, not your Christian name, not to be confused with that. So under Under Gentile, it says, one of an uncovenanted nation, one who knows not the true God. Did the rules change to these definitions? Because if someone told you that doesn't really exist now because someone told me otherwise. Unfortunately, we may have assumed and presumed because someone else is saying something is true and now we've taken it as gospel truth and because most of the people that are even involved in the gospel movement may proclaim that they can use a surname with impunity and still be a christian does not mean they're a christian and in fact you will see these nations and peoples who have belief in this idea that they can actually kill their fellow man, do things contrary to the scripture on peace that Christ proclaimed, and still be a Christian, does not mean they're a Christian. They prove by their fruits. And so the fruits of the Christian movement today is a very bad record of complete blasphemy to Jesus Christ. Complete blasphemy to the scripture. Yes, you will have a gospel, a good spell in your name. And then you also attach it to the bad spell and you will have a bad spell. Because that bad spell will work contrary to the good spell. Because the last thing someone hears is the bad spell in your name. So they don't hear the good spell anymore. The gospel. And the gospel, the word, Christ was made word, it's in your name. He is the word on the street. For those that walk in peace, at one, atoned because of his blood. But when you say to the contrary, you actually have become the surety. So no longer is Christ your surety, you've now gone in surety for the pagan side. Which has nothing to do with scripture. And there's truth and consequences in that action. So if you take the truth of your Christian name and you become surety for the pagan side you will bear the consequences, the duty, the debt, the obligation that comes to it.
We hope that this part of, the, of our videos has clarified these points between the private, the public, and the fact that if what you do and what you say, what comes out of your mouth and by your actions will bring about either good results or bad results.